Good morning, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It's a little after 11 o'clock and uh, it is Tuesday, May 5th, and uh, this is our morning COVID conversations that we have here on Facebook Live. We're gonna be speaking today with Joe Spano, who is the Commissioner of the Department of Corrections for Westchester County. Joe, thanks for being with us today. Good morning and thank you. Joe, you've had an experience uh, in the County Corrections Department that spans a lifetime practically, although you've done a few other things in the industry. Um, you're probably the best person that can explain the scope and the responsibilities in the Department of Corrections. Tell us, for folks who may not be uh, uh, knowledgeable about this particular part of county government, what it is that the Corrections Department is tasked with doing. Well, it would be my pleasure. I always enjoy talking about our agency. We're, we're certainly one of the larger local jails in New York State. <coughs> we have a reputation in the space as being very progressive, and part of that is associated with our robust rehabilitation and re, uh, re-entry programming. And that's part of our core mission. You know, we're required to provide services and treatment to help incarcerated men and women get on a better life path, and I'm proud to say uh, we do it aggressively and we do it uh, effectively. Uh, another part of our core mission is to ensure that the statutory rights of those who are remanded into our custody are never compromised and that we provide a safe and humane environment. And uh, operating under the best custodial and national standards in the country greatly supports are aligning with those core missions. We have probably the most diverse workforce in uh, all of the county and probably in part of the region. And we have a very, very well-trained professional workforce as well. Now you're tasked uh, with uh, managing an institution that has 1800 beds or thereabouts. And uh, you have people that are remanded to your uh, uh, area for incarceration for certain periods of time for certain kinds of crimes. Can you sort of outline that and compare it, if you would, to what the state prison system does and how that differs from what the county jail does? Sure. And individuals can be sentenced into our custody for up to a year, obviously in the state facilities well beyond that, um, as well as our sentence population. We have a number of individuals who, who qualify as pretrial. Uh, they, they are uh, remanded into our custody pending the outcome of their court cases. Now, this is National Corrections Officers Week. A, a year ago, we had a, a great celebration over in your campus for the 50th uh, year of uh, uh, the presence of the organization. Now, uh, what's the symbolism of the week and how does it tie into the history of the organization here in Westchester County? It's a week that's very important and meaningful to all of us here. For a number of years, the work that was done in jails and prisons across the country went unnoticed and unrecognized. And, uh, and in 1984, uh, President Ronald Reagan made a decision to change that. He designated the week in May as National Correctional Officers Week. And he did that for a few reasons. One, he wanted to engineer public and awareness uh, public awareness and respect for correctional professionals. He wanted to highlight some of the great work that those professionals do to help incarcerated men and women get on a better life path. And it's work that's done in a very complicated environment. And he also wanted to give correction agencies an opportunity to highlight the great advancements and achievements that have been made over the years in the field of corrections. And as you, as you mentioned, we did that in a very special way last year. We celebrated the 50 year anniversary of the, our department. We certainly highlighted the many achievements that were made over the course of that period. We highlighted the fact that we're recognized as a national leader in the space. And we highlighted uh, the great sacrifice, commitment and efforts that past and present correctional professionals have made at our agency. And now a year later, we find ourselves in the middle of an unprecedented uh, coronavirus pandemic. And I can tell you, George, a pandemic is something that as an agency we have planned for in the past, but this is the first time that we've ever had to find a way to safely navigate through one. Well, it's an uncharted territory for all of us, Joe, and, and unlike some departments of county government, um, there's, no, uh, there's no working from home 
the tasks of uh, incarcerating and monitoring those people that uh, are being jailed for a reason. They've, they've had uh, the adjudication of their case and found guilty, and now they have to serve a certain penalty within the society, notwithstanding the, the programs you have to try to reintroduce them to society when they get released. But having a, um, you know, having a, a jail setting is one that where uh, the COVID uh, situation has exploded in other parts of the country. We've heard that meatpacking plants and, and of course nursing homes and prisons have been the, the single largest incubators of COVID-19 around the, the country. What were the steps that you've taken, you and your leadership team, to prevent, to detect, to respond uh, to any of these suspected cases of COVID-19? Well, we took many, and, I, and like I said, we, d we did have a pandemic plan in place, and we developed that plan in 2009 when we were faced with the threat of H1N1, the swine flu. And as part of that, we stockpiled PPEs, and we stockpiled cleaning uh, and sanitation supplies, and we changed the way we did business here. So having that in place was very helpful. It gave us a strong foundation going into this coronavirus challenge. Uh, one of the first things we did, we provided refresher training for all of our staff. And refresher training centered, centered on our pandemic plan. It centered on our communicable disease and universal precaution plan. And then we did a deep dive into our inventory. We wanted to see how, you know, how well we were prepared to deal with a challenge like this. And initially we were very prepared, but not knowing what the long the long-term view of this coronavirus was, we, we initiated and placed a number of orders to make sure that we could replenish those supplies. And we had our medical provider, WellPath, and our food service and commissary provider, commissary provider, Aramark, do the same. Now, I will tell you, we were aggressive early on. We were proactive and collectively, we put in over 60 measures to help prevent, detect, and respond to any suspect, suspected cases of COVID-19. I'm not going to go over all 60, but I did jot down a few because I think it's important for the folks, um, you know, the public to get a good sense of what we've done to protect our workforce, our residents, and the public. So I'm gonna quickly go over a few of those um, those items, uh, you know, I talked about us checking our inventory and uh, WellPath as well as uh, Aramark. I'm, I'm happy to say I was contacted by WellPath yesterday and their leadership donating 2,000 surgical masks to us. Uh, and that with those surgical masks will be used for both staff and residents. And that's something that we implemented. Every staff member and every resident are wearing masks all of our staff upon arrival to duty, with they're getting temperature checks. Uh, early on in the process, we established an expedited testing process for both staff and residents. That was really helpful. You know, we had a lot of, of our employees with, uh, with symptoms early on, having the ability to get them tested immediately really helped us. First and foremost, if somebody was positive, they were able to go home and safely go through their quarantine period. And for those who were negative, we were able to rotate them, rotate them back into uh, the workforce, which was really critical for us. On the resident side, any suspected cases, they were quarantined. I mean, they were isolated, they were tested. The units they were in were quarantined. So having the ability to get results in two or three days was very helpful. Again, if that individual was positive, he or she remained on isolation if they were, and as did the unit. If they were negative, the unit came off of quarantine. We also expanded our sanitation and cleaning efforts complex wide. Uh, we have a consistent flow of information to both staff and residents. We made arrangements for all laundry to be cleaned off site. We established the staffing contingency plans for DOC operations. We had our medical and food service providers do the same. We modified our booking, intake, and new admission procedures. We established a residency quarantine policy. We suspended all family visitation and volunteer services. We established a unit to track all COVID-19 related absences and expenses. And with the shelter-in-place lockdown, we made arrangements with your approval 
um, to have our food service vendor provide free meals for our workforce. And I can tell you that's greatly, greatly appreciated. We implemented a video court process to support local, county, and federal court proceedings. And of course, throughout the process, and we continue to do so, we maintain regular communications with the Department of Health, State Commission of Correction, New York State Sheriff's Association, and our neighbors, our neighboring jails in Nassau and Suffolk County. And that collaboration has really been helpful for us. And I'm proud to say that what we've done has made a difference. Our apex here was March 29th and going into the first week of April. And at that time, we had 53 active resident uh, cases. We now have no active or suspected resident COVID-19 cases. Around that time, we had over 100 active employee cases. All total, we had 136 employee positive cases. Today, we have nine employee cases and, who, and those individuals are home safely recovering, uh, going through their recovery period. So yes, we did quite a bit of work and I'm happy to say it had a very positive impact on our operations. Well, that's a great story of being able to anticipate and then manage uh, in a situation that's not easy to manage in, uh, where you have a confined circumstance and there's certain rules and certain things that can find people in a way that might not be the case in any other department in the county government. Uh, obviously, you know, you, and you've mentioned this, that, that the outstanding work that's been done by the variety of different people in the organization from, uh, from top level management all the way on down. Um, you know, what types of plans do you have to recognize that type of effort? Well, we're going to do a few things to recognize our, our workforce. Um, our executive team and I, we're, we're extremely proud of our workforce, and that includes our correction officers, our supervisors, our senior management team, our spiritual care leaders, food service providers, our medical providers, our uh, maintenance workers, but certainly our, um, our program and administrative staff. At some point, we're gonna, we, we've already had these discussions. We're gonna partner with the correction union heads, Bruce Donnelly and Neil Pallone, and we're gonna have an on-site barbecue for all staff and just a way to show our appreciation for the amazing work that they continue to do in a complicated environment. And, and when the time is appropriate, we're also going to find a way to formally recognize our workforce. We'll have a ceremony and we'll formally recognize them for the work that they continue to do here. Well, we look forward to be very much being a part of all of those, uh, uh, all of those recognitions because of the tough work that, uh, that your men and women have. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the residents of the, uh, of the facility, those who are there, how they responded to this, uh, what about their families? How have you managed that process? You've had to restrict outside visitors. That certainly creates a certain dynamic. Uh, how has the, the resident and the family's piece of this worked? You know, overall, I'm pleased to say the residents have been patient and understanding. Uh, by their own admission, they were very afraid. You know, like us, they watched the, the, the early news broadcast and there were a lot of predictions of doom and gloom. So they were afraid for themselves and and they were afraid for their family members as well. So yes, you mentioned we had to suspend family visitation and that was a proactive measure we took um, for obvious reasons. But knowing how important that connection is, we made other arrangements. We modified our video vis family video visitation to help them stay connected that way. We provided free phone calling cards for our residents. We provided uh, stamped envelopes for those who wanted to send correspondence. Operationally, we enhanced our mental health, our mental health rounds. We provided wellness material. We enhanced our correction officer supervisory inspections. What does that mean? In the units where we traditionally did have, did 30 minute inspections, we we went to 15 minute inspections. We wanted to have more connection, more eyes on the, the residents during the complicated phase of this pandemic. And we provided, although most of our programs and services were compromised by this pandemic, we did find a way to provide some, some self-study educational material, self-study addictions material, and using our video visitation system, we're bringing in some of our community partners remotely to provide some other services for our residents. 
Uh, Joe, you, you've been around this institution for a long time. You've had different functions within it. Uh, you're probably the, in the best position to talk about what you think comes next. Even though none of us know how long this is going to last for, there's no roadmap, no past pandemic to look back on. How do you see things playing out? How do we, quote unquote, get back to normal as you see it from where your vantage point is? Yeah, it's going to be a different normal. We understand that, but we've already started to, um, to plan on what we think that should look like. Uh, and as part of that process, we're evaluating all aspects of our operation. Everyone, that includes our booking, intake, and discharge procedures, our court procedures, our transportation procedures. What, is it, what does it look like in our education center, our classroom procedures, and our many chapels, our religious service procedures, and of course, family visitation. So we're putting together a plan, we're putting our thoughts and ideas on paper, and just like we have from the beginning, we'll share those thoughts and ideas with the Department of Health, the State Commission of Correction, we'll lean on the CDC, and we'll, we'll continue to collaborate with other correction agencies, and I'm very confident that when the time is appropriate, we'll safely and gradually transition back to normal operations. Well, Joe, you should feel uh, good to know that every time I deal with my colleagues in other counties and the city of New York, uh, they always speak very highly and uh, very much in admiration of the work that's going on in the Westchester County Jail. I often get questions about, uh, you know, how, do we, how can we do that in our county, similar to what you've been able to accomplish. So I take a little personal credit for it. You've been on the job a lot longer than I've been on my job. So congratulations for the hard work. And most importantly, keep up the good work because we are in a situation where inside a jail, COVID can spread, and the fact that you've got these things down to a manageable level is to great credit to you and to your executive team and, and all throughout the institution. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and thank you and your team for your continued support because it really does make a difference here. We've been talking with Joe Spano, who is the uh, Commissioner of the Department of Corrections, uh, and uh, the outline of the issues that are happening relative to COVID and other related things uh, at the Westchester County Jail. This is National Correction Officers Week. If you have a neighbor or friend who's a corrections officer, greet them warmly, thank them for their service. It's a job that none of us are trained to do and uh, most of us wouldn't do. And we should be appreciative for those men and women that do have decided to make this their career. So thank you to our correction officers, Joe. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll be back at two o'clock for our daily update. We'll give you the latest information as we have it and uh, try to give you some announcements that may be of some interest to you as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you a little later and stay safe. Thank you.